Well, it's a big week of high school football here in our area because it is uh, Robert E. Lee and John Tyler, or John Tyler against Robert E. Lee, depending on your point of view, coming up on Friday night at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. By my calculation, this is the 60th time the two schools have met. They've been playing since the late 1950s when Robert E. Lee became a high school, and they will meet at 7.30 at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. It's always a lot of fun. It's no longer a district game, but uh, to the kids who play in it, that doesn't seem to matter much. And I guess not to the coaches. Coach Piskey is with us. This is the third time that you've been a part of this thing. Uh, you've been a, you, you've done rivalry games before. What's it like to be a part of something like that? Well, it's always fun, you know, because you know, you know, Rickland and our staffs know each other pretty well, and the kids know each other pretty well. So really, it's one you really want to win because you have bragging rights for a year, and you see those guys all the time. And so it's a lot of fun, no matter which school it is that you're rivalry with. That rivalry game is always a little more special. Do you think it's changed? Now, of course, since you've been a part of it, it has been a district ball game. For a long time it was. It played at the end of the year, uh, playoffs often on the line, district championships and stuff like that. Um, you know, now that it's not, the, the fans still seem to think it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal. Well, the I think, kids seem to think yeah, it's a big right. deal. Yeah, that's right. I think everyone still thinks it's a big deal. Yeah. Anytime you're playing the rivalry, it, it doesn't matter when it is. It could be in the middle of the summer, and it's a big deal. You know, 7 yeah. 7 we get after it pretty good against each other. So it's just one of those things is really what makes the uh, high school sports so great is you have rivalries like that, uh, close-knit people that you're, you're near to that you want to beat their tail and get after it and have right. a lot of fun doing it. All right, we'll get, to the, uh, we'll get to JT coming up here just a bit, but uh, uh, this past week you played a very good team in Lufkin. Uh, uh, the final score was Lufkin 43-19 over Robert E. Lee, but I thought that game, I don't think the score accurate, accurately reflected how hard your guys competed in that football game. Yeah, that's what, uh, after game, Chris Perry and I were talking, and that's what he was talking about. He goes, you know, you look at the score, and the score doesn't reflect the right. game, uh, but it was the score. But, you know, we got after, uh, really, I think we made a lot of strides. We've still got some areas that, that have to be fixed this week, and we've made some adjustments this weekend that I believe is going to fix them and throughout this week. But, uh, you know, we got after it pretty good because they're a good football team, and, and, and we just got to continue to make strides and be ready this week. There was a, uh, they jumped out 13 zip. And, uh, you know, and that happened within a three-minute period of time, right at the beginning of the game, and you're sitting there going, oh, boy. But there was a safety, then a scoring drive, then another defensive stand and a field goal. So all of a sudden, you're down 13-12, and it's a whole other ball game, and credit your guys for – Coming back. Yeah, they're going. They're going to keep doing that. But that's you know that's the deal is is a, again again the opening kickoff special teams let them run it back down. I don't know mm -hmm. thirty yard line scored pretty quick and so you know we've got to, got to shore that up. But the kids battled back, did a good job. You know right before the half when we didn't get any points there because we had wasted time out earlier in the early in the half. Uh, you know on the personnel deal uh, that really hurt us. And then we came out third quarter, drove down, missed a field goal. Those are two chances right there to kind of keep the momentum going. Uh, you know, because when you're playing a really good football team, you get a chance to, to do something and put them away and, and extend your lead. you got to do it. You know, otherwise you're not going to be able to hang in too long. How good are the two teams you played so far, Fossil Ridge and Lufkin? Well, I saw Fossil Ridge won again this week, 38-21, I guess. And, you know, Lufkin, you know what they did to Longview that first week. So, really, they're, they're pretty good. We knew it going in, but it's right. going to help us. I mean, you know, if we can withstand it and uh, uh, stay positive, which kids have done a great job doing, the coaches have done a great job doing. You know, we're not real positive on Friday night about 2 in the morning when we're setting up trying to figure things <laughs> out. But by the next day, you know, we get come to work and get the fellowship going again and just, you know, roll our sleeves up and go to work. It's, it's working. Has special teams play been the biggest disappointment for you so yeah, far? Yeah, it really has. And, you know, we're doing what? 99.9% .9 of people in America do. Uh, you know, you've got some guys that maybe can't get on the field for you offensively and defensively, and so you try to use them as some of your special teams positions to, to not have your starters going all the mm -hmm. time, you know. And, and when you – the numbers we have, uh, you don't go live in the scrimmage on your special teams. So you really you got your first ball game and second ball game. You give them a couple of weeks to try to see if those kids can get it done. And, uh, so, you know, we've, we've, now it's time we've got to go ahead and readjust it and put guys in there that, that maybe play offense and defense, and they're just going to have to get in better shape and get it done. We just can't keep giving up big plays on special teams. Yeah, I know. I was talking to Coach Holmes about that. John Tyler, same thing. I mean, you really would like to be able to give your starters as much rest as possible. It would be a great opportunity to play some of those other guys that are working just as hard as everybody else. But in the end, those special teams plays can just kill you. Yeah, it's a third of the game. And so, you know, that's the thing is those guys have had their opportunity. Uh, you know, if they show through practice and effort that they can get it done, they'll be, you know, have another chance to get on there. But right now we've got to get it cleaned up for 
Number one, John Tyler. Number two, Sachse starting district next week. Yeah, and so all that's uh, all that's important. Uh, we're going to roll the tape here, and let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, and we'll talk about the Lufkin game as we go, and then of course we'll come back to John Tyler. But uh, it was uh, game number two of the season. It was on the road at Abe Martin Stadium on Friday night. And uh, here you are on the road in the white uniforms on defense early in the game. Yeah, it's Brandon Derman, uh, you know, and a host of other guys. Our pursuit's been good. Uh, we still got to work on our angles just a little bit and our fits just a little bit, but the effort's been good. Early we've tackled well. I, I think in the fourth quarter we, uh, we've gotten a little sloppy on our tackling here. Price in good position. Linebacker gets underneath it. Uh, I believe that's Campbell Miller tipped that. Yeah, that's it? right. Yeah, sophomore. And that's what we were trying to explain to him during the game is he tipped the football, but they threw a flag on Price anyways. Uh, sometimes you lose those arguments. I'd forgotten they threw a flag on yeah, that play, Yeah, that's right. right. Pass interference. They said it wasn't tipped. Right here, Zach does a good job of reading it and getting outside. You know, you look downfield, and there's Dante Johnson, I believe it is, uh, or maybe Ijewan after blocking getting after it downfield, mm -hmm. turning into a big play, just a wider angle of it. O-line much improved this week over week uh, one. They did a great job, had some young guys in there, Xavier Gardner at tackle and Davon Morgan over at that uh, right guard, and they got after it against a really good defense. You're hoping to get Weeks back this week though, mm -hmm. right? Yep, yep, that's right. Weeks and Pinkerton, the mm -hmm. right guard, were out. But these two young and stepped in there and- Did okay. They're gonna have to earn it back. I mean, these guys did a good job. Hawks doing a pretty good job with the rugby punt. Uh, one time we kind of screwed up on our coverage, but uh, he's doing a good job getting that punt off good, and good. pinning them down there. <clears throat> Here he is again. You say rugby punt, the punter actually moves rolls left out, or right, yeah. rolls out. Yeah, yeah. right-footed guy goes right. And it helps you keep it away from that return guy. You can buy a little time. Uh, we didn't want to kick it to, to Kiki. You'll see why later. <laughs> Kiki Kuti is his name. He's a pretty good player too, isn't he? He's pretty fast. Yeah, here you go. It's samples working hard outside. That's, uh, I believe, Tatum breaking on the foot. No, that's Mikael Sanders breaking on that football. I thought he had a pick there. Should Cody's a pretty good angle. player. He's left-handed quarterback, a pitcher in baseball. You know, really, he's much improved from last year. Uh, you know, really, he was. Uh, overall, uh, they've gotten better, but that's one place they've shored up a whole bunch. He's done a good job. Uh, Cumbie has improved now you're down 13 zip here, right? This is the safety, I think, right? I think so. And you're blitzing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, kids get to the yeah get to him good. You got they? Coates and and uh, Miller in on the play. I couldn't help but get excited. Well, about I that don't, I don't blame you. I did too. I realized his mama's heredity <laughs> was taking over, and <laughs> he's gonna be all right. Well, it was fun seeing him. They did a good job off the edge and pursuing, yeah. and then. You know, coming at the right angle, if you come at one of you comes at the wrong angle, he can split that and go, yeah. so they did a good job. Well, that was fun. But again, uh, of course, my son is Braden, the number 45, but Campbell Miller, the sophomore linebacker. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's really a good he, young he player. He is. He's he? doing a pretty good job. He just, you know, got to get a little quicker. Yes. But he was uh, the other kid. They high the kid. Yeah. There, right? Yeah. All right. We had a, Ijuan did a great job returning these kickoffs. Uh, you know, that's why nobody kicks it deep. Coach Reyes from NAC and, and I were talking this yeah. morning and, you know, it's hard to find 11 guys willing to run down there like a wild man. Uh, we don't, I guess you can recruit 11 if you're in college, but <laughs> in high school, you got to find ones that want to, and that's what kickoff team's about. Oshawa was a big kid. He's 6'3". Yeah, and really he's deceptively speed. He's yeah. not scared to hit it up in there. Uh, really, we're going to much improve on that kickoff return this next week because we fired a few of those guys that aren't touching anybody. And Ajo was tall enough. He looked like he only took about four steps to yeah. get that 20, yeah. 25 yards. Really, he's, he's, he's pretty <laughs> fast game speed. Yeah, he's a good young player and also a heck of a basketball player, really a heck of an athlete. So, you know, to have, have a kid like that, there's so much. You played him last year. Now we're back. He played safety last year. played safety last yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. Back on offense now. Watch the block off the edge. But... Uh, Pulled it, that's Zach with his read. Thought that was a play where Tavon cleaned this guy's clock out mm -hmm. here on the edge. Wide now, angle. And when you call the zone read, that's a quarterback's read. He t Explain what he's doing here. Well, basically, he's just got to read. Uh, if they don't cover the outside, he can give it. And if they cover it, we got to block, you know, got it blocked inside for him to pull it. So basically, everybody's doing now just kind of the zone read. Right. Puts that in in a, in a bind. And again, there's a Trevor Carr. Yeah, we uh, really we work that pretty good. He went a little bold a little bit. They could have called him moving forward. 
really I got this from Lorena in the playoffs when they did it against us. They've never been in the under center and in the playoffs, fourth and one, they motioned in there and stopped and took a snap, got a first yeah. down. So I said, heck, let's try it. Trevor's played quarterback yeah, before, that's right. so that yeah. little bit of trickery yeah. cut it to 13 to nine. And you're going to stop them again here yep. on Defense. this series. That's Teddy Matlock coming in, doing a good job. You know, those guys on that edge have to be real physical to set that edge. Wide angle, same play. Teddy's up here outside linebacker. And at this point, Coach, you've got pretty much all the momentum in the game going right yeah, now. Yeah, really that first half we did. Like I say, they got two scores because of that uh, kickoff. Well, punt team on one, kickoff team on the other. Uh, so really, you know, you could be looking at a, at a decent lead. There's Dermot does a good job mm -hmm. running through and making a play. But if you look, the outside linebacker had the edge set. I don't know which kid's out there. Uh, looks like Calhoun. He's got his contain, got the edge set. Gives Dermot an alley to run through. Greg Calhoun, young man who's a junior, recovered two fumbles, or caused two fumbles in the first Last game. week. Mm -hmm. uh, been starting, uh, he started as a sophomore for you from about the middle of the season yeah, last year. Yeah, too, when Teddy you? tore his ACL at last year, he, uh, I think this is Campbell. Nope. Yeah, that's Campbell Miller on a blitz. Mm -hmm. Does a good job of getting there and coming to balance, not letting that guy juke him out. Yeah, it's one thing to rush the quarterback, but if you can keep him going with, without losing contain, that's, right. that's the trick to the yeah. whole thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. you got to come to balance and, and uh, take the right angle not to give that guy, see we're having a little internet, slow internet well, While it's morning. doing that, while it's uh, 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 doing its thing here, um, your linebacking group right now is young. Um, Miller and Calhoun are both of your starters. One's a sophomore, one's a junior. Yeah. You've got a couple of seniors there starting, Dermot and Matlock. So you got a pretty good yeah. mix of guys. Yeah, but they're young there. guys, you know, outside of Dermot's spot. You know, Matlock, Braden, and some of those other young guys are getting a lot of playing time out there. So that's going to help us. That'll help us down the road. Uh, same thing in the secondary. You know, we're getting some youth mixed in uh, yeah. there. And on the front line, we're just rolling three at a time. So we're getting some playing time out of some young guys there. And that's what we do. We try to look at the depth board. And uh, make sure, in fact, as we spent, you know, probably an hour or so on the JV yesterday looking at their depth board to make sure we're developing depth right. in the right <clears> spots <throat> and all that kind of thing. Well, you talk about the defensive line. You had that issue Friday, uh, Saturday, Friday night because Jerry Viela, who was playing nose tackle for you in the first game, mm -hmm. had to play more offense this past week. So That's right. So who stepped in for him and did such a good job? Well, really uh, moved samples into the nose some. Uh, mm -hmm. And then that uh, Traveris Watson. Went in there and uh, Watson did a pretty good job. Uh, big K Taylor, uh, Kamitris Taylor. Kamitris Taylor. Uh, had used Kamitris there kind of by committee. Mm -hmm. And they all you know, kind of have their different, uh, Watson's really good with his hands. Uh, Samples is just a strong uh, athletic kid. Uh, big Taylor's just a mountain mm -hmm. and they're not gonna, you know, not gonna move him without you know, double teaming him. So really rolling those three guys have helped. And then Jerry, you know, we had a, times where Jerry came back in and played that, uh, played that nose also. I'll just uh, uh, say this to uh, our, our producer Greg McGregor, if the highlights come back up, pop them back on and we'll take them. I know we're having a little bit of computer issue here. Here we go. Well, let's, there you let's go. All you had to do is ask. All I have to do is ask. All right, let's do this and keep going. That was that this. same play with Campbell Miller there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, this helped force a uh, punt situation. And uh, you wound up kicking a field goal, didn't get the touchdown you wanted, yeah. but you're down down one at that point, down yeah. 13 to 12. So uh, just again, let's talk about some of the, uh, uh, on that defensive line, some of the other kids that uh, are jumping out there and playing defense. Well, here we, now here you are on offense. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the defense we kick in a that field goal right here you just talked about. Your sophomore kicker is Matthew Hawk. That's right. right. Hawk's going to be a good one. You know, we had Bloss and he tore his ACL last spring. Uh, Playing around on the weekend, and so Hawks had to step in, punting and kicking, done a great job. It was a 34-yard field goal. Yeah, that's right. He's got a great leg. We've had to speed him up a little bit. You know, that first game he got that one blocked. He's long-legged. He's pretty far back, so he's had to speed up his approach and start it quicker. So he's getting that done. It's just another angle of it. And there's some people on the field goal here that we've, we've had to fire. You'll see some leakage come through, and that's just guys, you know, not taking it, uh, the responsibility uh, as serious, no, you know, not surely after two games they figure out special teams can cost you football yeah, games. Yeah, they can. They, and so, Mark Russell uh, is the holder. Yeah, that's too. right. Mark does a good job. He's got good hands. Uh, you got to have somebody that's got good hands doing that. 
Here you are on offense. That's Mason Parker with the fake and then Zach making his read. By the way, you really got Mason Parker involved this past week. I know you wanted to do that, really get him more involved in the game yeah. than you did. You really yeah, that's right. That. And him and Tyreek, you know, they were all uh, about the same. We got to get them, uh, uh, get them blocking better. They're not doing a good job blocking. Some of them need to figure out, if, you know, takes them a while to figure out if they're not blocking, they're probably not going to get to carry it either. So. Zach, though, can be pretty special for you, can he? Before yeah, he he's really, he's matured a lot, and he's getting better and better every week. Uh, he's got to continue to get better, you know, reading things, uh, pre-snap, post-snap. But other than that, he's really done a good job uh, operating the offense. They set up a screen here. We had it played well. Those guys, Calhoun, samples them, were sitting on it. You know, them D-linemen, it takes them a little while to figure out. If that guy lets me go unblocked, there's something up. This is not 45 again here. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, I think goodness. it is. Okay. I just noticed it because it's so slow getting there. Slow getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's coming off the edge. Uh, but you did. You 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 uh, got good pat pressure in right. a lot of ways on Friday night on yeah. uh, Cumbie, didn't yeah. you? Really outside of outside of that. Uh, it's probably the last six minutes of the football game. We played really mm -hmm. good defense. Uh, special teams, like I say, put the defense in the bind a few times. Let them return it down there deep. Gave up some scores. Uh, I believe that's Tatum coming up right. Nope, that's Price. Price did a really good job. He's come a thousand miles from last year. Uh, you know, one time they threw the quick hitch and he almost got pinned inside. And next thing you know, he's making the tackle for no gain uh, on the outside. So he's being a lot more physical. Another defensive highlight here. Really, the secondary is much improved. They'll be tested this Friday night again as they will be every week. But they've done a great job. D-line, you got a lot of kids rolling in there. Again, that's Udo underneath and Michael coming up and breaking it up. Sanders, a little sophomore. Safety's done a – he's gotten better and better. It's Devon Wesley's brother, and he is a very talented – Yeah, that's right. He's big, strong Big, kid. tall, strong. Yeah. He's going to be pretty good, just a sophomore. And he'll work hard and do what you ask him to do. So we look for good things for him for the rest of his career. Yep. Absolutely. All right, here they go again. Same play, different angle. So Udo good, did a good job of getting in his hip pocket and trailing, getting underneath him. Patrick Udofi is a senior. Yep. Patrick's really, he's back to his old self. You know, last year he wasn't with that leg and sure feels good to see him back. Here we are back on offense. Again, it's a Tavon West. Given to Tavon. But if you look, you look on the outside out there, there's a back out there knocking somebody down. So that's why we went for about 17 yards instead of a five yard gain. You really haven't had the opportunity yet, quite yet, to really unleash Devon Wesley. And he is no, that's very right. Talented. He's going to get there, though. He'll stay patient. But if you look off the edge, we've got back out there blocking and sealing, receivers out there blocking. They're doing a great job so far. Really, I felt like we're a lot better this week than we were last week uh, as overall as a football team. Now we've got to make that same step this week against JT. Going to get to see Ajwan again here, I think. On, Kickoff on, return, on kick yeah, they return. kept kicking it to Ajwan. We kept being glad they did, but, you know, we'll, our, either one of our deep guys can go. We've got to get, really, we've got to get better blocking on that side. I know it looks like it's great because he made a good move and found a crease, but there's about three guys over where it didn't touch anybody. But he's got those long strides and he covers ground so yeah, fast. Yeah, he does. And he's not, I mean, like I said before, he's not <laughs> scary. And that's the key on a kickoff return. You've got to be willing to hit it up in there 100 miles an hour and yeah. not do any dancing. Well, you know, that sounds easy enough to just sit here and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Unless you're the guy you. carrying the that's ball. Right. Right? <laughs> Unless I'm the guy asked to hit it up in there 100 miles an hour, kind of kamikaze mentality. But yeah. he's got it. He's a tough kid. Yeah, he is. Again, an outstanding basketball player as well, just a multi-sport. Back on defense here. Thought we did better getting lined up this week, doing all that. There you go. That's probably Campbell there. Yeah. Falling in there. Like to see him get there a little quicker and hit him in the mouth instead of at the ankles. Get the same play, running play. Excellent job. Yeah. Him and Darman both there. I thought Brandon had a good game. He did. He's him. gotten better. The numbers from that football game, uh, you wound up uh, rushing this week, did you not, for 233 yards? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. We uh, And a lot of that was in the first half. I yeah. mean, really, uh, we take away those special team blunders in the first half. 
and have, we had them on the ropes. They were tired. Defensively, they were tired there towards the end. Uh, we just didn't put them away with, with points there at the end. Uh, and like I say, I, you know, we gave them two touchdowns basically off kickoff returns in the first half. And we got to be able to shore that up and then come back out the third quarter with the same vigor that we finished the half with. You know, we had the possession at the end, possession at the beginning, didn't get points out of either one of them. When you do special teams, how much game planning? I mean, we know that people think about offense and defense because you can game plan for a specific offense and a specific defense. How do you game plan on special teams? Well, same thing. You watch film, see if they got any weaknesses or what they're going to do alignment-wise, anything you can take advantage yeah. of. And you look at, well, you look at like they had, they, got, they have Kiki. And we worked all week on don't kick it to Kiki. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't care who he kicked it to as long as he didn't kick it to Kiki. Mm -hmm. And uh, work on stuff like that. And then they'll always, just like on us, we'll have tendencies, kids that have tendencies by their stance or whatever things that they right. do. So you really, it's just the third phase of the game. Uh, you've got guys uh, in charge of special teams and they look at that and watch that closely. And then, you know, we go through as a staff. Uh, I know, yes, I guess, my days were running together. I guess it was Saturday. Right. We went through as a staff and watched the special teams. And then we watched them again Sunday to look at uh, personnel, you know, more than execution is personnel that can't get it done and made some changes there. And so really you just treat it as just like an offensive defense. It's just another another phase of the game. And even on the, the putt return, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm doing it in real time doing the ball game. When, they, when Couty ran his punt back, it looked like Hawk did his job he kicked the ball away from the kid. That's right. He took it on the bounce and still ran it back. Well, the problem was is the play before, he wasn't able to, and we pinned him about the four, but somebody was not on the line of scrimmage. Too many men in the backfield have to re-kick. That's right. You had to re-kick right. that play. And so didn't. now we re-kick it to him, and, and the gunner didn't differentiate between if I'm trying to pin him deep, I've got to locate the ball because that guy's going to try to fake me out and mm -hmm. fair catch over here and let the ball hit inside the 10 and roll. But if I'm just punting to him, I got to locate the guy receiving the ball. You know, there's a difference between pinning it deep, trying to you know pin it in, inside the 20 versus a regular punt. Regular punt. And and Udo just lost the guy and got beside him, and of course he's smart enough, Kiki is, just to catch it and take off. And then you know there wasn't anybody on the field that was going to catch him at that point. You know, and it did, I mean he's he was so fast that within three seconds. He's at the 50, and the only guy between him and the goal line is the punter. That's right. And that's tough. Yeah, that's hard on Hawk. I mean, that's not <laughs> I mean, fair on Hawk. He well, took a good angle and was hustling, uh, but he's just out man there speed-wise. But we got to do a better job of locating the, the returner. All right, talk to me about JT. They're off to a 2-0 and start. They beat Plano, and they, uh, they beat Longview. Two running football teams, too, which – JT's Achilles heel in the past couple of years has been run defense, and you said at the top of the show, looks like they're better. Yeah, that. yeah, they, you know, from watching them, watching them against Plano Live, and then watching the film against Longview, their they're front guys, uh, Chicago and Braylon and, and those guys, Benson, uh, they're playing a lot better, mm -hmm. more physical, and then their linebackers are getting downhill, and they've got, you know, some outside backers and safeties, and at times they're going to have eight in the box, and that's because Kane and uh, Warren are so good out there at the corners, they can mm -hmm. just lock you up and and let the rest of those other nine folks play on the run, so they've gotten a lot better. How good are Kane and Warren at the cornerback? They're really good. You mean really are? They're both good. They're physical. They run well. They're good tacklers. So really, they've got they've got the whole package. I mean, if they if they don't need both of them, we'll take one of them. <laughs> but uh, no, I wish you could make <laughs> trades in high school, right? right? Like they do in the pros. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. But no, they do. They do a good job. Um, they're. Uh, uh, their their group again. Do they do they uh, when they when they rush the passer? Do they blitz a lot? I know you've done a lot of a fair amount of blitzing. In well, the they've early games. they've sent them some, you know, off the edge and stuff. And and but just that uh, Chicago's so quick. Uh, Which one is he? Number nine. Okay. Uh, he's so quick. The kid that had to sit out last year okay. plays nose guard. Braylon moved out to the tackle. Right. Pierre Leonard, I believe. Is that's name, it. Right? That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just I've heard him call him Chicago. So yeah. I figured. I have no idea why they do that. I think he's from Chicago. Okay, it must he be moved in from Chicago. <laughs> uh, okay. But now he's. He's, he's got a low center of gravity, thick kid. I think they run him the ball on offense some too. Uh, but he's quick and strong. And then, of course, Braylon's just an animal out there. You know, he was there last year at Nose. They've been able to move him at tackle. Uh, so those guys are very physical. Really, they're just huge up front, very physical and, and really athletic. And their whole team's athletic. I mean, that's what makes them so good. Rickland, I've laughed about this, but uh, Gio McAllister, quarterback, was a linebacker as a freshman. Yeah. Uh, got any linebackers like that? You know, going no, uh, and he runs like a linebacker. Ninth grade linebacker, yeah, right. play quarterback yeah. some, at some point. He uh, he runs like a linebacker too. Really, he's physical when he runs yeah. and does a good job. Really, they got a great football team, and so we're excited about the opportunity. And and uh, 
you know, getting after it on Friday and see what happens. He is truly, though, uh, the young man is truly a kind of a double threat. I mean, he can throw the ball well, but uh, he, he can also, they're trying not to have him run as much. Yeah. But uh, you he's. Know, I, maybe they won't know. run him at all this week. I'll talk to Rick. <laughs> You'd be about okay that. about yeah, that. Yeah, hey, okay just let him throw it. But uh, no, uh, Gio, he does good. And he's kind of like Barker, too. He's so tall. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't look like he's flying, but he's covering a lot of ground and he's, and he's also real physical. Their guy and your guy are both very athletic, kind of different types of players, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Zach's not 6'3", yeah. but uh, they're both very athletic and they both really uh, they look like they both made great strides as first-year starters last year to where they are right now. Yeah, I think they both have. Uh, I, know, I know Zach has, and then watching Gio on film, he has too. I mean, really, they, they're going to have an exciting year, and we're going to end up having an exciting year, and it's going to be fun for Tyler by the end of the season. Uh, this time last year, you were 2-0, and had all this momentum going in, and uh, – there's a lot of talking going on this yeah. week, wasn't there? Hey, uh, that's part of the problem. You know, uh, last year we got so full of ourselves after those first two football games, spent a lot of time talking about how good we were. And, you know, uh, sometimes you're you just beating Lufkin, too. Isn't yeah, it? that's right. And uh, sometimes it's a humbling experience, but it teaches you that you just show up every day and get after it, try to get as good as you can mm -hmm. get. Uh, when you win some, mm -hmm. don't worry about that. Just show up the next day and try to even get better and better and better versus you know, I was thinking we've arrived and, uh, you know, we hadn't arrived until we do what the 94 and the 04 lead team uh, did, and that's raise that gold ball. So we just got to get that mentality of just show up every day. And as coaches, that's what we focus on, you know. We just show up every day and get after it and do the best we can. This is not a district championship game, but it is kind of a city championship. It's a city championship. It's their goal. It's our goal. I mean, we both have it on our goal, uh, yeah. goal list, win the city championship, you know, because you want those bragging rights and, mm -hmm. and – uh, and do all that so you know it's an important football game so what would it mean to win this thing i mean it's not again it's not going to help you get in the playoffs you yeah. can get the you can win or lose friday night it's not going to make one iota of difference whether you get in the playoffs well i you know i i've been having to call rickland daddy for two years now so <laughs> i guess if i could that's right i want to be called daddy for a little while so yeah i give him a hard time and and uh, call him daddy after he kicks our tails so uh, you know, it'd be good just to just to win it and, and get that, you know, let the kids understand that they, they can win big rivalry games. Yeah, there'd be momentum coming off this this game for Saxe and District coming up in two That's weeks, right, because Saxe's, you know, they're good also. I mean, yeah. they lost Plano West last week, but they're a really good football team, probably one of the top two in the district competition-wise that, that everybody's picking to win. And so I think John Tyler's going to give us a good test, and we can pull that off, give the kids some confidence to know they can move into the district uh, you know, knowing we've reached where we want to get to continue to get better as we move along. Real quick, injury-wise, where are you? I think we're good. You know, Hill's still out, uh, Hudson is, but uh, everybody else, I think, uh, will be back this week. Uh, a couple that I, I don't know yet, uh, they have one of them has to go to the doctor today to get cleared, but I think we'll be full strength on Friday. All right, good luck. Appreciate it. Again, uh, for those of you going to the ball game and it's always a great, if you've never been, this would be a great, great year to go because it's really a fun event for uh, Tyler. And uh, Robert E. Lee is the designated home team. It's Lee's year to be the home team, so they'll sit on the press, press box side. JT fans are on the visitor side this year, but both teams know the surroundings very well. It is 7.30 on Friday night at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium, the Red Raiders and the Lions going at it, I think, for the 60th time. Been playing each other every year since the late 1950s when Lee opened up, and it's always a heck of a lot of fun. And both teams need and deserve your support. So we'll see you at the stadium Friday night. Robert E. Lee against John Tyler. Thanks for joining us.